<laughs> yeah, should have definitely, yeah. Is his father in law? Yeah, that is good. Work. I say, I'm still not my age, so. <laughs> <laughs> How does it feel I mean, after the Rugby World Cup? Obviously, book out. Yeah. But has it sort of sunk in that you're stepping away from international? Um, it probably hasn't yet. Um, I think when when the first Six Nations games kick off, and I'm sat at home watching it on the TV or, or preparing for a bath match, then the realization will probably hit home. But you know, it was uh, it was the right time for me. I'd, I'd, uh, Fantastic career with England, you know, 11 great years or 13 from, since my first tour, um, and you know it's, it's frustrating to to end with the disappointment of, of this World Cup. But unfortunately, in sport, there aren't always fairy tales. So you know, I look back on uh, on my international career, and uh, you know, I'm very proud of, of what we achieved and, and the teams and, and the players that I was very fortunate to play with. I mean, having experienced 2003, it must have made this last campaign a bit of a disappointment. Yeah, you know, I was lucky to be involved in three World Cups. Um, the first two, we made the final, and uh, and with this one just gone, you know, I was pretty much expecting the same. You know, that's what I've become accustomed to. So to to be knocked out in the quarter final is no, no way of describing it. It was numbing. You know, you had no words to describe um, the feeling, and and it took and it's still taking you know a while to get over. Um, it will be one of my eternal frustrations, but. You know, I think the team will learn from it, and, uh, and I think, and I hope, Jono stays in charge and uh, and takes that team through to 2015, much like Graham Henry did after his defeat in 07, and Clive in in 99 to go on and win in 2003. And um, just more broadly, you're wearing a poppy, and there's been this ongoing row with FIFA and the footballers whether they can wear a poppy. How do you think the England football team should be able to wear poppies at the weekend. Yeah, I, I don't see why not. You know, as as England rugby players, we, we wore the embroidered poppy, poppy on our on our shirts, and you know, you wear it with pride. You know, it remembers the the guys that that gave everything so that we can be here today and enjoy the the lives that we lead, and not only those from past but also present conflicts. So, um, you know, I think it's very important that people wear the poppy. I mean, in terms of if it's captain of your national team, if you're told by the sports governing body that you couldn't wear a poppy, I mean, how would that make you, you, you and your team feel? Yeah, I think I'd be pretty disappointed. Um, but you know, I'd uh, I'd be pushing to to get that poppy on the shirt, and I, and I think that's the way it should be. I, you know, it's uh, it's not a political symbol; it's just a symbol of remembrance, and, and that's the way it should be. And just finally, so what's next for you? Obviously, focusing on the club career, but um, how are you going to fill this? This will, will ma- I imagine, will be a big void, yeah. In yeah. your, uh, it will be a huge void. Um, yeah, I'm just going to dedicate myself to the club. You know, it's nice to be able to concentrate on Bath, and uh, you know, we've got some big ho- European games, Heineken Cup games coming up. Um, playing Glasgow, uh, then Montpellier next week. So uh, it's, it's an exciting time for the club that that are hungry for silverware. And uh, with Ian McGeek and Brad Davis, Martin Hag, all the coaches in charge, you know, we're looking forward to, to what's going to be a good couple of seasons. And, and for me, the the last few seasons of, of my career potentially.